Hey, what's up, guys? This is your girl, King Abby, live with Red Clap and Nigel. All right, so today I'm going to be interviewing one of the leading acts in the entertainment industry, one that all the females be drilling over, Mr. Oreo and Yaya himself. What's up? How you doing? What's popping? What's good? What's happening? Oh, yeah, it's popping. So I was telling the other time we're going to be doing the interview yeah, like yeah, this. Okay. Like the whole time. <laughs> okay, don't worry. We'll continue after the interview now. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, you look great, by the way. Thank you so much. You look great too. Thank you. Yay. He said I look great. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So, how do you say your real name? I know your real name is Inyanya, but I'm, I try not saying Makuna. Inyanya Onoyo Mbuk. Let me try that. Inyanya Onoyo Mbuk. From Cross River State. Calabar in your bottom, obese area. Don't go there. I mean, just listen. <laughs> okay, let me try the name. Yaya Onoyom Mbuk. Yaya Onoyom Mbuk. You got it, man. <laughs> Alrighty, so, alright. Okay, so it all started from Project Fame in 2008. So, because I remember always we my family we never used to miss project fam it was like my mom everybody was rooting for it. yeah yeah i think it was it was I, I, we was like you and kojo i don't know if that's his name uh, it was me and me yeah Ghana. yeah yeah because i knew it was from ghana and my mother's like no yeah yeah it's gonna win it yes and then that's i remember Yes, shout out to you, mommy. And then when you won, everybody was like, yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, so, you know, since then, and you've been doing very great for yourself, and how has your journey been since after Project Fame 2008? Oh, man, it's been a long one. But, yeah, first of all, let me say shout out to everybody watching, everybody that tuned in. Thank you so much for having me on the show, too. Yes. Uh, it's been exciting. I've uh, been been here for a couple of weeks for my American tour. Mm -hmm. It's been looking good. That's why we're here in DC mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow for the show. Yeah. It's it's been ups, it's been downs. You understand? I've I've made mistakes. I've learned from them. You know. I've also I've I've also ach achieved a lot for myself. You know. Uh, there's nobody there who would say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a fluke, or yeah, yeah, it just came from nowhere, because you know my story from Project Fame, like you said, till today. I owe it all to God, to the fans who keep motivating me, you know, to everybody that drops comments, you know, bad, good comments, everything is, you know, has led to who I am today. That is very interesting. So how do you deal with the hate? Because I know a lot of people out there, no matter how good you're doing, people still going to have, like, something hateful to say about you how do you deal with that it's, it's also you know motivation for me understand because if if I'm not doing right that person will not leave their own life and their own hustle and their own challenges and jump on my page and start being famous because that means I am the boss you understand because you are you are in my comment section you know on my page you know so I just I just take it whatever they say and sometimes when they actually drop bad comments, you need to check it because there's some truth in it. So I like to just sit back and check. Is this guy being really honest right now? Right. Okay, if he, if he is, okay, I'll stop that thing if he's wrong. If he's not making any sense, I just ignore. You understand? But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it doesn't change the fact that I'm blessed and successful. You know? right. whatever, whatever. Change the fact that you're making that money, huh? You can't even, it's not even close to, it's nothing. It's, doesn't even exist. It's just there for the people that have time to make a story out of it. But for me as a person, I'm on to greater things. That's interesting. So tell us a little bit more about, you know, your childhood, your family. Tell us a little more about Anyaya. Not the Anyaya we see on Instagram or on TV. Cool we want to go dipper. I'm, I'm a cool guy. I'm a very cool guy. I'm easy. You know. My, the people that know me know me. I'm easy like Sunday morning, man. Sunday no morning. stress. <laughs> I like that. No stress, man. I mean, I can't really tell you so much right now, but I had a, growing up was amazing for me because my parents love me, and for every child, that's the most important thing that your parents love you and give you what you want, you know, mm -hmm. mentally, physically, you know. I mean, anyhow you want it, your parents should just always be there for you. And when you grow up, that's the one reason why you want to say, oh, 
I need to buy mommy a car because mommy gave me everything. Yeah. I need to buy daddy a house because he gave me everything. Mm -hmm. So I had that, you know, I had a great, my mom was everything to me, you know, so rest in peace, you know, and she taught me a lot of great things that has kept me going till today, you know. So um, I read that you lost your parents, I think 2008? 2009, 10. Oh, wow. So, you know, losing your parents is a very, and your brother, it's really tough. Like, losing anybody is really tough. How were you able to deal with that? Like, you know, considering the fact that you have to work, you have to make music, and you have to, you know, keep going. How did you deal with that? Ah, uh, man, it's God's grace, man. God's grace. And the fact that, you know, before they left, they were happy I was doing what I was doing. And me saying to myself, oh, it's over because I lost them. It's just failure, you understand, for both parties, for both people. Because wherever they are now, I'm sure they're proud that I'm doing this interview now and they're talking about them. You get what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are gone and nobody even talks about them. But you're talking about my parents right now and you never met them. So it means they, they gave birth to a king. Hey gang, what's up? Can I be your quint? We can talk, I mean, after the show. Okay, <laughs> okay. All right, so when did you decide to make music a career? Yo, shout out to um, the then governor of Crossover States. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Donald Duke. You know, he came through with the Calabar Carnival. I'm from Calabar, we have Carnival. Shout out to my governor, Ben, ben Ayadi, uh, and the people of the states. Carnival every Christmas, you know, people from all over the world come there, musicians from all over the world come there. It's always, it's always nice. So he started it and he said, you know, if you have a demo, you can get uh, about a thousand dollars back then. And, or close to a thousand dollars. So I was like, maybe seven, eight hundred dollars. So I was, I was like, geez, this is, this is a great opportunity for me. So, um, I, I reached out to my then producer, who's late now, uh, Charles Hussong. Uh I reached out to him and we, we, we quickly put something together. And after performance, they gave me that money and I looked at it. And I said, look, this is me. I'm nobody right now. Like, and these people gave me a close to $1,000. And P-Square was on that show. Two-Face was on that show. Uh, Mohits was on that show. Um, a lot of people were on that show, so I started thinking, how much did they give those guys? That's a lot of money. Yes, so From there I said, let's start making money with this passion. Let's start making money with this gift. Mm -hmm. You know, let's start, let's be passionate about it, more passionate about it, you know. And, and I thank God that, you know, it made it come through. That's good. So I remember you used to sing just the R&B. Yeah. So. You still sing. Yeah, I know. I know you. And it's amazing because, you know, now we, we're not, like, we used to hearing the whole Kukiri and yeah, yeah. And then I remember um, Shay Shay featured you on um, Right Now. And I heard that that remix. I was like, that's the Inyaya, the one project film. Oh, my God. Like, the way you can do both is amazing. But what made you transition? Oh, From man. just R&B. A, a fan of mine, you know. A fan of mine, you know, I can't remember. It was a DM, you know, on Twitter. <clears throat> and she was like, I think you can do, you know, like dance music with your voice. You know, just blend it in. I, I wish I, I, I saved or I just remember that person. Because that tweet just changed my... You still, you still remember her? I can't remember. I wish I did. Trust me. But, you, should, you should keep that kind but, of but, close. But... Yeah, but you know, like I, I didn't, it didn't hit me till I, I, you know, it just came to my mind later, mm -hmm. and I was like, yo, what? That's sweet though, like, right. you know. But not right there, you know. When I saw it, it was like, oh yeah, okay. But after that, I now thought about it later. Then you know, these things they delete and stuff, and that changed everything. I started doing, you know, commercial music. It took about two years for me to get Kukiri, you know, so I mean, I had to learn the whole process, learn from everybody too, you know, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, Kukiri came out, and once you get that one song, it's an it's opening for, it's, you know, it's opening for so many things. Yeah. yeah. When I heard Kukiri, I was like, what is that, yeah, yeah? 
Ooh. So what was the inspiration behind Cooker? That's just me trying to be commercial, I you know. Nothing else. You know, you know, people liked it because it was original, you know, it was, it was. new. You know, it was you know, the dance, nobody is you know, nobody had seen it before, it was new and people like new stuff. You know, and they like when your music is adventurous, like when you, they can take part and, you know, act like they're part of you and, that, and that's what that song did. And it was, that song was everything. It's still everything. It's still everything. It made it, made it, it, made it possible for me. So let's talk about your fashion. You're one fine, classy, caraba boy like that. So, um... Or do you have like a designer, or you pick your own clothes, or? Um, I just I, I buy different stuff, you know, and I I have uh, right now I'm, I'm I'm the ambassador for a brand called Dunes mm -hmm. in Nigeria, you know, so they style me, you know, my suits okay. and everything. I see you in a lot of suits. Though. Yeah, you know, they work with you know high-end brands, mm -hmm. you know, so my suits are really nice. And I do I do a different brands, t-shirts, jeans. And shoes. I love Timberland and stuff. Alright. All right. Are you wearing one? Okay, yes he is. Alright. Alright. Okay. I've read on some blogs that you kinda like wrote a note to like fake friends and backstabbers and all of that. What was that about? Oh man. I mean it's the everyday thing, you know. You know like when I I was not seeking for attention when I dropped that note. It was just me sending my own how I felt at that moment to those people because I know they saw it, mm -hmm. you know. But not, after that, I learned that you know maybe I should just send it to them, right. you know, not say it to the public because then because because of who I am, the public now, you see, it's a big issue for you now. You have to bring it up, you know. But it, to me, it was just saying something to somebody, you know. How that's One how I person. felt. One person or a lot of people. One person and everybody that's just around that person or around me. You know, I like people that you know. I like the people around me to know that I know who they are. You know, I don't like people to think that, or oh, maybe I'm so into myself that I don't even know that you were fake. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know real people. I, I recognize real because I'm real. We recognize real, huh? Yeah. Alright, so what are you working on right now? What are we expecting? Yeah, Any collaboration? New video right now. Oh yeah, that video is dope. Yeah, high beats. Uh, brand new song and it's getting love. Thank you. Check you it out. You dropped the video today. Today. Oh yes, yeah. you guys should go check it out because Red Carpet and I actually exactly. posted it. We posted it on our website. Thank you so so much. um, if you guys have not seen it, go see it. It's a check dope it video. Oh yeah, and that song, um, My Woman. Yeah, that's woman, uh, my type of woman. I'm sorry. Thank oh yeah, you. nice song. Thank You're doing your thing. Thank you, Thank you so much. Sure. All right, so you're currently, you know, in U.S. for like a tour, yeah. and you're having a concert yeah. in um, D.C. Hampton Conference. Yeah. So, what should your fans expect? What What should we expect? To, you know, <laughs> I definitely want to see you take off that shirt. To be honest, mm -hmm. if you if you step out of your house mm -hmm. with the mindset that you were going out to have a good time, right. trust me, you will have a good time. So first of all, I like to tell everybody coming out to come out with a good vibe. You know, wear something nice. You know, you know. Wear something nice. Yeah, come on, put nice hair. You know, feel good with yourself. Feel beautiful. Come out there and just have fun. You know, and that way you will connect with me because I'm on that level. On that level. Yeah. All right. So a little birdie told me that you're dating. You're taken. So, are you dating or single? Uh, I'm not taking, man. <clears throat> are you single or but dating? I just said I'm not taking. No, I want you to use the word single. Nah, but I just said I'm not taking. All right, so y'all can still kiss. I know they're still sliding your DM even if you're taking, but taking. you're not taking. Y'all don't need to slide in his DM because we're going home together. All right, so what's like a typical day for you? Yo, it depends. Sometimes it's interviews, sometimes it's just long traffic. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, party, you know, drinks with friends, you know, meet and greets, video shoots, you know, anything. You know. Yeah, like, do you ever get a day where you're like, oh, I had to date to myself? Ah, man, I don't think so, man. The one call I'm out, you know, I gotta go. I gotta go now that I have the strength 
I have to get it. I like so that. I don't I don't have time to sleep or I don't even want to sleep. What am I sleeping for? <laughs> but I'm not saying I don't rest, right. but I'm trying to say that. Because that's one, knitted. Yeah, but once that call comes in, you got to go. You're, you're out there. You got to go. That's what's up. So if you, you know, get the chance to choose music over again, would you do it over again? Oh, man. 300 lifetimes, man. This is me. This is, this is my life. This is, I can't, this is all I got. You know, this is the only thing that comforts me. You understand? Like... It makes me feel like no nothing else, you know. Even money doesn't make me feel so good. Really? Um, maybe I, I think I was saying that. I don't know. I'm, I'm scared. Cause I know you but, love money. But, but, yeah, but <laughs> no, but uh, maybe I kind of just. You uh, do. I, I know you where do. We draw the line. <laughs> I guess that's where we draw the line. But okay, like what I'm trying to say is, I mean. At the end of the day, people have so much money, they're not happy. So, but this is one thing that all I need to do when I feel bad is just play one of my favorite songs. And nothing else matters. So what kind of song do you listen to more? R&B, hip-hop? Oh, I listen to country. a lot of R&B. Country? Yeah, country too. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kenny Rogers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All types of music? All, all journalists, man. You know, yeah, because I, I like to challenge myself, you know, and the only way you can do that is to get, you know, like a lot, you know, knowledge should be you know, more than just, oh yeah, I think I know it. Right. You got to keep upgrading, keep, you know, keep learning, keep, keep learning. trying. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I know you've had a lot of wonderful moments in your career. Yeah. So what's your greatest so far? Oh, yeah. The greatest for me is just that project fame, okay. you know, because that that was the begin. That was the that was a very very good platform. Mm -hmm. It was different, you know, because um, unlike other people who just come in and they not they not prepared for it. It's like let's get in the studio. So we get in the studio, boom, that's a hit. And the hit just takes the guy unawares. The guy doesn't he doesn't even know it's a hit, so he goes out there as a hit, he's famous. But Project Fame just kind of put me through a lot because they, they were trying to teach me so much that I learned. I didn't know how to use the stage, you know. I didn't know how to connect with the crowd. I, I didn't know so many things, but Project Fame, trust me, taught me so much. So it kind of just prepared me for this in a way. You know, that's really good. Anyways. That's really good because, you know, not, you know, a lot of people who won Project Fame, we don't really hear so much about, you know, well. about them today. But the good thing is that you took what you learned and look at where it got you today. I mean, it doesn't make me better than them, you know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it not, doesn't. But. It doesn't. It doesn't make me better than them. It's just people. People have the reasons why they don't, you know, continue with certain things. You know, like you don't know if the guy who won the last one wants to be a doctor. You know what I'm trying to say? So there are different reasons why you're not hearing from those guys. You know, and the thing about this competition. Like if you want to be a doctor, why would you go for a competition? That's because you have a nice voice and you have, your, your family thinks you can win. Oh, okay. You get what I'm trying to say? So you, you win and they go, what's next? You're like, guys, I want to be a doctor. So, that, I mean, that kills, you know, it kills everything. But those who I believe have always wanted to be, you know, Kings in this music lane are doing it. Chidima is doing well, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, she's doing great. Um, Timmy Dacolo is phenomenal. He's, I love him. He's, he's, he's out of this world. Like, I would, I would go to Timmy's show to watch, to, you know, he's him perform. An he's an amazing singer. Exactly. So, the, I mean, the people that wanted to do this as, you know, a professional are doing it. You know. Well, I'll take that. Yeah. So, if you were named one of the greatest in your career, what would you be known for? I'll, I'll leave that to the fans, man. Being sexy? I don't even know. I'm sure they will never see that again. I wish to be shut up. I, I oh my god. I was in Lagos. I don't think they'll say anything else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta have to be shut up. That's it. Do you get like a lot of beef because. Oh, yeah. I get that every day, you know? Really? Yeah. Because I was there's in. Always, there's always guys, though. 
And of I, I understand how they feel. Like yeah. I, I totally understand how, I, I mean, the guy that doesn't like me because I'm fit and he's not fit, I understand why, I mean. So you live in the gym? I mean, I love to keep fit, you know? I mean, I've been to a place where a girl was like, you know, she can't come to my show because my boyfriend said, uh, I'm just going there to remove my shirt. And I was like, I don't know about that. that Are means, you serious? That means he's not confident enough because if he's confident, he will take you to a show that you want to go and make sure that you're happy and he will trust you enough to just come back home with him. You know what I'm trying to say, so. Okay, I will take that. Uh, yeah. But you know, you're Mr. Mr. Steal Your Girl, though. I'm not, that, I'm not. I'm not stolen anybody's girl in my Don't make tell me like you're a heartbreaker. I like you're a bad guy. I've a girl in my whole, I've been in this game next year. Okay, but I've you're never, you're capable. Ever. Nobody said you have, but you're capable. That's banky. I'm not capable, that's me. That's Whatever. <laughs> That's bank, you know what I mean? But I'm sure you're not gonna be surprised if a girl comes to your concert with her boyfriend and then she's like, boy, well, bye, I'm going I home also, with the Yaya. I also, I also see some great guys mm -hmm. that will come to you, they will come back to you and say, my girl loves your music and she needs a picture. And I, I respect those kind of people. Yeah, that's definitely. That's a real man. That's a real man. Yeah. Yeah. He knows that's his woman, so he's not even scared. He's like, dude, with all this, she's coming back home, right? Yeah. She got to come back home. She better. All right, so before I let you go, we're going to play a game. Okay. I want to play a game. All right, so I'm going to ask you questions, and you can only, I will give you two options, and you can only pick one. You got to do it real fast. So, ass or boobs? Don't think about it. Ass. I know. You know why? Cause all your music video, you been smacking her. No, you been smacking it all your music video. You been smacking it. I was like, mm, he must be the ass Yo, one. I'm just playing your game, man. I don't know what you're talking about. But you know, yes, you do. You know what I'm talking about. You be okay. I'm just playing your game, but all right. Yeah, so who would you pick? Allow me to do David. Don't think about it. Both. You're thinking, no, no, you can't do both. You got, no, you got, <laughs> you got to pick one. Both, they, they're both, they're both great in their lanes, you know. So I, I don't. It's hard. It's a hard one because you know I love their music, both of them, and they do different. You know, it's not the same thing. Jollof. Afro, Afro pop, yeah. Mm -hmm. Olamide is like the Yoruba king, and he's doing his killing. So Jollof for fried rice. Jollof. Jalof. Uh, he's a Jalof guy, y'all. He's a he's Jalof. He's Jalof. He's Jalof. That's what's up. Anyways, we've come to the end of this interview. So before you go, give us a quick shout out. Yo, yo, what up? It's Yaya, aka Mr. Aria. You already know I'm chilling. Red carpet night, but We're not on the red carpet though. So black sofa <laughs> and a beautiful lady. Yeah. But yeah, keep it locked on this station, man. It's Yaya. Boom.